What is up YouTube? Coach Colton here to bring you physique development tools, skills, and opinions that hopefully you can use for yourself to develop an amazing body. In this video, we're going to talk about a common misconception that you cannot grow more muscle on a TRT or recovery phase within your bodybuilding career. Or if you're one of those oddballs who just uses gear for no I personally think and have experienced a plethora of growth in many other individuals, including myself, on a TRT phase. And I'm going to show you exactly how I go about doing that for myself and my clients. So can you do this on TRT? Is it even possible? And is it healthy? TRT phases are essential for quailing any health metrics that were obviously deterred from the use of high androgen loads. And these periods are designed to last anywhere from 8 to even 20, sometimes way more than 20 weeks, depending on how deranged health has gotten within the time. I've worked with many clients who have been using gear endlessly for years and they need plenty of time off. And I'm talking upwards of a year off to really recover certain metrics, including kidney function. However, these phases are seen as times where you cannot make gains and certainly not make improvements within the gym. I have seen so many, so many examples, like Big Paul from Anabolic Bodybuilding, who's shown a great deal of progress using 125 milligrams a week. And in that sense, it's like, how would that really possibly happen? And it's pretty easy to understand when inflammation in the body is extremely high, when you're, you're getting chronically elevated C-reactive protein measurements, your methylation demands start to increase. At a certain point, your body starts to go in reverse. In fact, we know that having high inflammatory markers within the body can lead to blunt and hypertrophic responses for training protein consumption. And we don't necessarily know about androgens, but I would assume that if it's denying the main signals to growth within a natural human body, it's certainly going to deny antigen. And then when we relate to methylation demands and those increasing, man, you have a whole plethora of other issues at hand there. Recovery becomes a limiting factor. Sleep becomes a limiting factor. The amount of food you can eat becomes a limiting factor. At some point, when you lower testosterone and all the other compounds you're using down to a very baseline metric, you're going to experience maybe more growth due to a decrease in inflammation, due to a decrease in total body methylation, due to a overall more optimal position for your body to be in, i.e. why this might be called a health or recovery phase because you are getting healthier due to less stress applied to your body. That's why I believe you can grow without anything added into the mix besides just a basic testosterone placement therapy. And I'm not talking 250 milligrams, I'm talking 125, 150 milligrams. People tend to give up way too early when they see the dose coming down. They get into their own heads and think, I, there's no way I can lift as much. I'm starting to change my appearance. There's no way I'm gonna be gaining muscle during this period of time. And that belief in and of itself is going to limit you. People think that they'll start to look different and most of the time they don't. They're just starting to eat less accurately because I'm not gonna grow as much or they think they're getting weaker but they didn't hydrate themselves as normally or they didn't pay attention to sleep as much as they would on a prep or on a real cycle. And it's this big, big misconception of what a phase of TRT even is for that ruins people's perception of what they can do. However, there is some things you can sprinkle on to a replacement therapy phase for health and not deter health too much that can lead to more anabolism. However, I do want to state first the number one concept here, the one that's going to get you the most growth outside of any of the things I'm going to mention. And that is simply calories are king. The more calories you consume, the more you are going to grow. We know from plenty scientific literature that if you are simply eating in a hypercaloric status, you are going to grow muscle even without a training stimulus. And again, this is the period of time where people are like, well, I'm not on this massive dose of gear. I have to lower what I'm eating so I don't get fat. But this is the wrong move. You might get a little texture change in your skin and appear to be a little softer, but that doesn't mean you're getting fat and you need to still maintain the amount of food you're eating to retain the amount of muscle you've newly put on and as well, potentially build more. Beyond pushing calories up, the second thing I would consider is a massive focus to gym execution performance and progressive overload. This is a period of time, again, where people start to limit themselves just due to simple beliefs and say, I can't lift as much or I can't nearly do as much. But this is just a fallacy or telling yourself you can, it's not, you're not going to lose all the muscle and strength you've built and the neurological adaptations that have happened over a span of 16 weeks. It just simply will not fucking happen. Training your balls off to the induction of nosebleeds is where it is going to be to get gains while you are in a recovery or TRT phase. Next, what we'd get to that is actually a compound we can leverage is actually a higher dose of growth hormone. Typically, I'm not going to elevate growth hormone too much on a phase of high androgen use. Anywhere above eight IUs is really just too much for me. And even in most people, I'm not going above four. Unless you're 250, 260 pounds in a pretty good shape, I don't consider eight IUs to be necessary. In fact, that is something 
I would put in my back pocket for something like a recovery phase. We can leverage a little bit more growth hormone to get higher systemic levels of IGF-1 on that phase to improve overall muscle anabolism and improve possibly even body composition through using it as a lipolytic compound as well. To pair that with something, I would like to throw MK677 in on the nights before rest days. That way we can get all five dimer types of growth hormone being released in the body and we're getting about a 10 times increase in the total growth hormone your body's producing naturally. You have two different mechanisms for growth hormone secretion and exogenous induction that are going to enable that growth hormone pathway to be fully utilized. Combining that with something that's going to maintain insulin sensitivity like a metformin, even though I'm not a huge fan, or a berberine product like the product we have at First Attachment Nutrition called Suppressor. This is probably the best product on our lineup and my personal favorite. It is great for using and utilizing in the off season to make sure you can retain insulin sensitivity as much as possible. Use Colton10 as your discount code. Link down below in the comment section. And people would claim that growth Growth hormone would be unhealthy as well. However, we have decades of data, literally decade long data to support men using 18 to 25 IUs of growth hormone without any negative correlations or any sort of negative outcome. Some complained about water retention or edema. That was the most negative thing that had come up from that study. Uh, everything else appeared to be fine, including even blood glucose levels, which seemed to level out after a certain period of time of using that high of a dose of growth hormone. The next thing I would implement is a synergistic dose of insulin. I would use both long acting or basal insulin and short acting or acute insulin. I would use long acting insulin on the mornings uh, or even at nights, depending on how high calories are to increase the basal level of insulin in body, which is going to allow for, again, more anabolism, less catabolism, as well as provide more insulin-like binding proteins for the IGF-1 to bind to, and thus be transferred to some cellular target. And then I would administer then with that a pre-workout dose of Humalog or fast-acting insulin with a concoction for the pre, post, and intro workout window to maximize volumization, hyperaminoacidemia, and all the stuff that Milo Sarchev loves to talk about which really does work, and there's some people who claim it doesn't, but man, if you've ever tried it and done it right, it really does work. Finally, I would add IGF-1 LR3 to the mix. This is something I would administer intramuscularly pre-workout within about 15 minutes of touching weights. Some people say this compound does virtually nothing, and I have to seriously disagree. Any client I have used it with, or again, personally myself, taking anecdotes here, it has been extremely beneficial and made almost immediate changes to a physique, while those changes are relatively based around retention of what I would assume to be glycogen, nitrogen, and a little bit of uh, maybe some intracellular triglyceride. I still believe that this compound has a unique capability to cause localized growth, especially when administered pre-workout. And if you have not tried this and say that it doesn't work, I promise you if you do, it is gonna be some wild, wild stuff. Again, I'm not trying to throw plugs in here, but shameless plug, aminoasylum.com, code, Coach Colton, all caps, will get you 25% off. They do provide IGF-1 LR3, and uh, I have a clinic that we work with, obviously, with Blood Built Nutrition. That clinic is called Rise HRT. They also have it, and you can use Blood Built 20 on their website to get prescribed this compound. However, the uh, resources required to have that as a prescription are quite a bit high. And again, I think most people who say it doesn't work just simply haven't used it correctly or don't understand the environment or the context in which you need to use it in, specifically as, as a nutritional kind of situation as well as a, a lifestyle situation. IGF-1, LR3, or any IGF-1, even growth hormone is extremely conditional. And you need to understand when to use it and how to use it and what environment you need to place it in to get the most effect. And most people are just jamming this shit in them, going to do some, some stupid ass workout and not really getting any effect. And that's typically why people People are going to say this stuff doesn't work. That's why people say a lot of things don't work in particular. But this is my opinion. I don't really know what you guys want to do with this. If you think you can grow on TRT and TRT alone, I would probably agree with you. If you want a little more oomph to your TRT phase and you are a competitor who needs that oomph, I think this is a great option. If you disagree with me, I'd love to hear why in the comment section below. And please, I love learning and hearing other opinions. So it's not unwelcomed here. And I'm certainly not going to be upset if someone corrects me for something I've said. But I do appreciate you for staying tuned in this video if you could do me the huge favor of liking commenting subscribing doing all that good stuff down below it would mean the world to me as well i'm not homeless guys this is just my blackout shades that i have i don't have curtains but i have like a duct tape piece of like black reflective material on my window and that's what i'm using is like a blackout device not homeless or living in a house with duct taped windows i promise even though it does look like it and it is a little suspicious 
I'm not doing that. If you are new here, my name is Coach Colton. I have cerebral palsy. I'm a professional natural bodybuilder chasing his pro card in the IFBB Pro Division. I would love to hear more from you guys. Again, comment down below. We will see you in the next video. Deuces.